What's got you buzzing for summer? Today's Express is all about happy highs. <laughs> On today's show. The once you get it, it's like a ha, it's like so awarding. Cultus Lake Water Park's Big Summer. We check out Vancouver's new bouldering gym. Pretty high. Oh, we go. Take a ride on Glacier Air's new roller coaster with wings. He's really smart. School's not quite out for summer for Surrey's hardest working helper. This particular building was built by the community. And later, it's quality assured collision road trip. See that and more local expression. Welcome to the Express only on Sha TV. I'm Joe Hannah Ward. The buzz today, well, it's all about the high, Vancouver's only bouldering gym, where it's a good thing to be climbing the walls. When the hive opened, it was just an extension of Squamish. So coming here, training, being part of the climbing community. Christian Dykes has been climbing for three years, and he says the experience is like no other sport he's tried. The freedom of climbing, connecting with your body, uh, it's very yogic, it's very free-flowing, and very, uh, it, it just brings you closer to the moment. That zen-like zone isn't just felt by experienced climbers. Yeah, I like being kind of controlled and graceful going up and you feel kind of like, you know, yoga-esque. Alex and Celine are new to the sport and all smiles while they build up their strength. I've been here like, uh, what, six weeks now, I think? Something like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just as a nice activity to do to stay fit, have some fun. Conquer the fear of heights. <laughs> a fear of heights. It's a surprising yet common motivation at the Hive. I find myself going a little higher every time and getting a little more used to it. <laughs> Not totally conquered, but getting there. Avid climber Amy, who's also a manager at the Hive, sums it up in one word. Rewarding. Like you're always trying something and then once you get it, it's like a ha, it's like so awarding to get up the top of the wall. Of course, what goes up must come down. The first thing in Amy's teach, how to fall. Down your feet first, roll onto your butt and then onto your back with your arms in front of you. Seems easy enough here. Very good, <laughs> that's it. But that wasn't very far to fall. How that's high not. is that wall? That's about 16 feet up. High, but not so high that you need the layers. So I can learn the ropes without ropes. Johanna, when you start climbing, you wanna push off with your legs and just guide your arms. And keep your arms straight so you don't tire them out. Very good. How often do people just stall out on the wall though? All the time. All right, yeah. here we go. Feet first. That's beautiful. Well done. That there was like go. a slow motion fall. <laughs> kind of like how I climbed up the wall. Like anything, it takes practice and problem solving. To keep you on your toes, literally, they change the problems on the wall every few weeks. Because of the height that we have in the gym, you can climb on a different terrain. So sometimes overhang, sometimes vertical, or sometimes slab wall, just to build up that technique so that translates to outside. Now there are some obvious benefits to an indoor bouldering space, like shelter on the rainy days, but it's also handy when you're hobbling. I did a, had a climb, bit of a climbing accident on the Chief last week. With pulled tendons in his ankle, Christian is on crutches when he walks, yet he can work the wall with just one foot. It's good, I can still come and I can still climb and train up on the, can, on the, on the uh, hangboard. Another thing you probably won't find when you're climbing outside. My biggest goal is to be able to climb that so I can go down the slide. That's right, the Hive has a slide. It really is like bouldering in your backyard. The website is hiveclimbing.com. They have an area in the back just for kids. They offer ongoing intro to bouldering and technique workshops. And this Friday, June 29th, from 5 until close, they're having a ladies' night. Now, our next story, up next on the Express, takes us to an elementary school in Surrey that's gone to the dogs. Well, one dog, anyway. We get to meet a happy, hardworking canine named Marshall, who's giving new meaning to the term dog in it. He's really smart. He, he knows a lot of tricks. Like, he can speak, sit, roll over, all the dog tricks. And he's really kind to people. Marshall does do a lot of tricks and the typical dog things. But for students at James Ardeal Elementary, he's much more than just another dog. This is better than going for a great big walk. He'd rather be with the kids and totally relax. And for him, it's uh, the best part of his life. He gets so much more out of it, as do I. It's more fun when you're sharing love with someone else. Linnell works part-time at the school and has been bringing Marshall in since he was a puppy. Okay. 
says hello to the kids and to the teacher, and then we go outside and we walk with some of the kids on the playground. Some of the kids um, just need a friend to walk with. After we walk, uh, we go to the kindergarten room and the kids get to read to him. And some, for some of them it just means that they get to lay beside a furry friend and they get to read him a story and he quite likes that. And then afterwards, we get to go to the classroom and the kids get to do their work around him. And he, for him, that's a great part of the day. Marshall gives us a bunch of inf inspiration um, because he, he just brings a lot of joy to the classroom and every time we look forward to seeing him um, in the morning. He brings joy to the people. He's very nice, kind. He's a nice dog. I noticed a big change in the kids from visiting every day with Miss West's class that they, the kids are more relaxed throughout the day. They have a happier day and he has a happier day if he gets to go to school and visit with the kids. His presence seems to transform a sometimes stressful class time. And despite his potentially intimidating size, he's a welcoming friend to confide in. <laughs> For some of them, they can only express their love to a dog. Maybe they have a hard time saying it to a family member, or maybe they don't have family members to share that with. But for a dog, you can say, I love you to a dog, and dogs will love you unconditionally. And that's the biggest part of him coming here. Marshall, this is Darian. But sometimes lost in Marshall's tail is his sidekick. Linnell is there at all times, showing just as much love for students and everyone as he does. They make my day. I feel good being here. He feels good being here. And it's a good reflection. It's, uh, we, we all get something out of it. It's a win-win situation for everybody. The pair leave a wake of smiles through the hallways of James Ardeal and have undoubtedly taught the students the value of caring. I'm Paul McClellan in Surrey for The Express. A study released in 2010 showed that spending time with your pet after work is far more relaxing than just crashing on your couch and watching TV. We say why not incorporate both and have Fido watch The Express with you every night. Why not, hey? Now up next on today's show, we're joining Nicole Fitzgerald, dog lover, up in Squamish. Although it seems you're looking a little green today. I am feeling green and I haven't even been on the plane yet. The Super Decathlon, it's the newest addition to the fleet here at Glacier Air. And Glacier Air is celebrating its 10th anniversary and I know my stomach's gonna be doing some serious loop-de-loops. <laughs> Brave girl you are. And here I was earlier complaining about the height of the walls here at the Hive. You know, a little afraid of heights, but it's all worth it, isn't it? You're watching The Express and we've got more stories coming up. This particular building was built by the community. Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. Explore Campbell River's maritime history. We have approximately 155 boats that are racing. The Easter Seals Waves Regatta. World-class racing for a worthy cause. The Express, only on Shaw TV. The Express is brought to you in part by Plum, fashion supplier to host Johanna Ward.